Hey everybody, Mrs. Bianchi. Number two, calculate the mean absolute deviation for the data set. They don't give you the mean. We need that first in order to find the mean absolute deviation. So that means that we have to find the sum of all the numbers as step one. So we're going to take the sum of all the numbers. We're going to divide by how many data points we have. And that will give us the mean. But we won't be finished with that because we have to take the mean and do more stuff with it. All right, so the sum of the numbers, we shouldn't really need a calculator. I mean, if we were going to use a calculator, I just want to watch, want you to see how slow that would be to put in all the numbers in a calculator. If we put these in one at a time, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7, and we get that. But that took a while, right? So what should you do instead of that? You should take advantage of compatible numbers. What do I mean by that? If you just add this and this, you get 10. Most people would know that like a 2 and a 6 would be 8. So these two numbers are 8. And if we add 8 plus 7, 8 plus 7 would be 15. And all we'd have to do is just add the 10 plus 15 and get the 25. That would actually be a little faster than actually typing in the calculator, in my opinion. But you would be allowed to use a calculator on any quiz or test for me. All right, so the next step is divide by how many data points there are. One, two, three, four, five data points. Now, again, that's mental math. 25 divided by 5 would give us a mean of 5. All right, so once we have that, that's not the answer. Don't put that in the answer space because it's not asking for the mean. It's asking for the mean absolute deviation. So that means we have to take the number 5 and subtract the, um, or find the distance, I should say, of the, the distance between the two points on a number line is what we have to find. So we're really subtracting 5. The first value given there is 2. So 5 minus 2 would be 3. You're writing that on your piece of paper. By the way, all this you should write on your paper as well. If we subtract 5 minus 4, that's going to give us 1. If we subtract the 6 and the 5, that's going to give us 1. If we subtract the 6 and the 5, that's going to give us 1. And if we subtract the 7 and the 5, that ends up giving us 2. Now, some of you might be wondering, why was it okay to put the 5 up here for these? And then we moved it down here. And the reason why is because we're just, if I plot this on a number line and we count how many units apart they are, the red values would still be what they are. All right, so the mean was 5. We now have to find the sum of these numbers. Now, once again, you don't need a calculator for this. You should just do mental math. Like, we chunk things up. Like, this would be 3. And if you chunk these two things up together, right, 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 2 would be 8. So the sum of the numbers is 8. Now, we still have to divide that by how many data points there are. The data points will stay the same. We still have, if you look at how many red values I have written here, that's still 5 values. Now, it's not going to work out evenly, but you don't panic about that. You use your calculator. Now, if you did have to do the standard algorithm, you just do 8 divided by 5. And you would just go ahead and put a zero after, after the decimal. That wouldn't be horrible. But when we're allowed to use a calculator, watch 8 divided by 5, and we get this number. So that's the number you're going to be putting in as the mean absolute deviation. Not the mean. Don't put 5 in. You're putting this number in as your answer. And don't round it. Don't put in 2. You, the uh, directions specifically state to put in the exact answer.